This is a decentered media vlog with me, Rob Watson. Conversations about community media. Visit decentered.co.uk or follow on Instagram and Twitter at decentered media. Hello, uh, Rob Watson here, and I've got a share some ideas about what it means to be a community reporter I thought it would be a good idea to share some ideas about what it means to be a community reporter so uh, I've just come and sat in Castle Gardens for a minute and uh, I'm surrounded by squirrels who are kind of like I'm wondering whether I'm going to attack uh, so if you see me leap up into the air at some point and um, there'll be a, a squirrel not far behind um, so the um, yeah, the, 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 uh, a number of projects I'm working on at the moment have involved um, working with people to develop a community reporters outlook, um, which is uh, something that I kind of think just needs to be explained and contextualised because it's different from if you like journal, mainstream journalism, professional journalism, and I just wanted to use use a few minutes to uh, just go through some key key points and um, at the moment I've been working a lot with uh, Helen at the Ev and Harkesh at the Evington Echo uh, I've also doing some work with the Y Heritage Project where we've been training some uh, young people to think about culture and heritage um, and using community reports and techniques to reflect their journey if you like through those through learning about those things and it can be used in a lot of very uh, interesting ways um, but it also has certain um, characteristics which I think are important just to kind of draw the distinction between other forms of media engagement um, and then um, yeah so, so let's, uh, let, let's kind of think about them so I've, I have written some notes down and I'm using a gimbal uh, for my phone to record on which I'm not sure I'm in complete control of but we'll see if I can keep it steady at least uh, so the um, I think one of the first things to think about is what community media is and there's often um, a kind of discussion uh, about which is in to some extent which is a bit self confirmatory so that people kind of say well community media is this and Community media can be a lot of things and it isn't always uh, positive, it can be quite negative and exclusionary uh, as well as inclusive and um, a, a kind of positive contribution to our community uh, way of life. Um, so community media is it's kind of, it sits outside of mainstream broadcast media, so things like the BBC, uh, that state. Uh, organised media if you like and commercial media which is like ITV and the uh, global and capital the radio stations and they're more focused on the pro profit that they can derive from selling advertising so they and, and selling stations in fact uh, so they're a, a, a model of media which is very much defined by the market um, community media is really formed by groups of volunteers and activists and it kind of falls into the, re the, the, the kind of remit of uh, civic society and it falls into the remit of mutual aid groups and people who are um, working for the benefit of social goals uh, whether that is through participatory engagement with media or through uh, providing services for people who they want to support and, and help and facilitate but it isn't about profit and it isn't about uh, necessarily about profit it isn't about um, exclusive control it isn't about status it isn't about having a sense of privileged access to a platform it's a kind of you know, like a democratic a socially democratic form of engagement or it can be that um, but the aim is to achieve certain positive social goals like inclusion a wider range of opinions that are uh, 
respected and acknowledged and understood uh, companionship things that you know a sense of identity things that the market might not be able to provide in a particular area a sense of place um, so the goals are kind of about increasing choice and facilitating both choice for listeners and readers and viewers and also for facilitating access so it's about having a platform from which you can share your ideas uh, and they might be non-traditional ideas if you like so they might be oh, oh let me just try kind of perch down a bit maybe I should have brought a tripod for this it might have been a bit easier um, but the uh, yeah so the 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 context if you like is that um, it's people having a voice providing spaces for discussion that doesn't normally get heard and doesn't get um, uh, considered and if it does um, and, and, and it, it, it's kind of often through gatekeepers so you have to go through professional journalists <laughs> proprietors uh, managers producers whereas this is about people having direct means of access to the content that they want to produce uh, what makes community media specifically different um, is that it's trusted and it's accountable uh, so it's not like a free for a social media free for all so okay what's community reporter a community reporting is um, I suppose it's stories that originate from our own experiences it's stories that we want to tell and share about the places where we live the people who we are the people who we um, identify with and that engage within our are the places where the neighborhoods where we live or the uh, the uh, religious organizations that were uh, uh, affiliated to or the schools or colleges the workplaces wherever it is we're a community of uh, place community of identity or a community of interest and I think these stories are what's crucially different with these stories is that they uh, represent us we represent ourselves through these stories rather than simply being represented by other people so we're not uh, waiting for somebody else to tell our story we are using the techniques and the skills and the, 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 the resources that we have and there's been a technological revolution um, in, the, you know, in the last decade so we have things like smartphones now which makes it much more accessible not everybody's got them not everybody's capable or wants to learn how to use them but you know we've got a, 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 a wider range of platforms YouTube podcasting uh, community radio is part of that community newspapers are part of that as well uh, so there's a kind of a, a, an underpinning of people's ability to tell their own stories which I think is uh, in a participative way which is really important and I think those stories what's in useful and when it works well take those stories articulate a sense of identity and a sense of belonging um, so I, I'm sitting here in Castle Park here in Leicester today uh, and it's a unique I, I, I don't actually have the I'm not very brave at wandering through the streets I have to kind of sit somewhere quiet and out of the way uh, to do stuff like this I'd love to be able to kind of walk through the town centre <laughs> but other people can do that uh, that I know uh, whereas I'm a little bit more reticent about that but you know it, it's we should uh, consider how we capture the experience of what it is to be where we are at a particular time and what our thoughts and feelings are about that so community reporting is is at the kind of level which goes below professional commercial news media and it's about a lot of the time it's about our everyday experience and our, our ability to um, engage with one another um, and so it isn't journalism in that sense so journalism fulfills a really important social role in holding the powerful to account and to articulate and, and investigate and stories and issues that are would otherwise be detrimental to the public well-being and we you know we see that through our national broadcast media and you have to be you know you have to have a certain amount of organizational um, standards to be able to do that and there's been controversies over again over the last decade and beyond that maybe some people in our news industry aren't acting in an appropriate and honest and truthful way when they engage with people and we've had phone tap and scandals and things like that and journalism to some extent has been tainted by the commercialization so uh, of of information so 
you know, and the pressures that are on news organisations to follow clickbait uh, and scandals and breaking stories um, is is immense uh, because that's where you know the the mass market mass audiences. So community news is kind of niche. Uh, there's a terrible phrase, and I hate using the phrase, it, which is journalism. Uh, people often use which is hyper local i don't think anybody lives in a hyper local place we all live in a neighborhood uh, or a street or you know we we identify with people we don't have hyper local communities we are people and we are embedded in our neighborhoods and our, our, our places so it's no community reporting isn't about breaking news uh, and it's it's not about in many ways it's not about ex- opinions either and I kind of like to think about it as experiences. It's about a way of facilitating and sharing our experiences and our colleagues and our fellow citizens' experiences in a way which is, um, you know, who's the expert in somebody's experience? My walk through uh, Leicester today, uh, if I'm to describe my experience, and there's the squirrel behind me, if I'm to describe my experience, it's you know it, it's unique to me, and I have certain opinions that form out of that. But when you talk to each other about what your experience of something is, uh, we might have many opinions about things. And there's lots of platforms out there now, Facebook, Twitter, and everything else that we can express our opinions. But nobody has to listen to us. Whereas when we start to think about a shared experience, we're entering into a social rail, realm that is much more. Um, um, and kind of beneficial for the long term if you like um, and I think that the, the question to ask um, well, first of all you know that experience doesn't have to be extraordinary it doesn't have to be novel it doesn't have to be unique it really can be something which is quite mundane and it can be something which is quite um, straightforward we don't have to think about our experiences in terms of it has to be somehow uh, we, we see a lot of this but people chasing novelty um, and yeah it does work you know it, it has a it has a huge pull but our communities aren't founded on that you know kind of going to the shops getting a bus um, going to the post office um, parking these are all part of our everyday experience and you know, a, a thou- once out of a thousand times they become news, but the rest of the time they're just kind of in mundane and in the background. But a thousand people's experience of something could change, could become news in that sense. So it's about the things that we value uh, in our communities and our, our social lives. So it's things like the, the local services that we have uh, that are available to us in our neighbourhoods, like you know, our libraries are. Uh, coffee shops uh, are you know, green grocers uh, it's about local businesses maybe that are providing a, a, a kind of local service it's about when you know, kind of access to uh, you know kind of when you get your bins emptied it's not a story it's not a new story for most of the kind of mainstream media but it is something that's important in your daily life um, and it's Activities and events, I like to think the, 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 the work that we do with Leicester Community Radio is that we'll share information about activities and events if they're affordable. So we're not a commercial operation, although we'll take people's money you know, to do advertising. That's, that's no problem with that. Um, but they have to pay a commercial rate for that. But freely available activities in the community at a low cost then you know this provides a platform for that and they wouldn't otherwise get a platform to promote activity so it could be a a knit and natter group it could be a a local history group it could be you know anything that is um accessible for for people to that they wouldn't normally you know it, it might go in a community newsletter um, or it might go in, uh, you know, as, as a, an update on a notice board type item in a radio program, um, you know, as well as maybe sharing it on Twitter and Instagram or something like that. But not everybody accesses Twitter and Instagram, and we absorb information in different ways. Uh, the, 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 the platforms that we use, we use for different purposes and different reasons, and we acknowledge information that comes through those platforms in different ways as well. So it's kind of what. You know that does what we value. I think is a sense of place and a sense of um, heritage. Whether that, you know, uh, 
you know, the built environment heritage. Castle Park here is, you know, it kind of over, I think it's over over a hundred years old as a park. Uh, it's surrounded by some uh, re you know, Trinity houses behind me, so it's got Leicester Castle here. Uh, these these are places which have have deep rooted heritage. Um, um, things to think about well we're about our personal heritage you know it's uh, our identity as uh, I'm, I'm I'm an immigrant to Leicester my family heritage is up in Liverpool how does that shape who I am and what I think and how does that shape my interaction with other people and you know how does that shape your interaction your personal heritage and where does that get valued where does that get recognized and it, it so it's kind of like our shared cultures but also um, What's really important to think is that community reporting, community media has a real important principle, which is that it's about participation. You've got access to the platform. You create and develop your own platform and you control it. Uh, you have to take some responsibility for that and how you use it. But there's an element here which, you know, we can't just allow other people to tell our stories and we need to have control and ownership and some agency over the platforms that we use to share our stories. So. You know, we get to shape and share the types of stories that are uh, included in a newsletter, newspaper, uh, whatever, you know, kind of radio programme. And I think there's all, you know, this provides uh, as crucially, and I think this was really important through the lockdown, was a, an alternative to the, the information overload that we get from mainstream media, which is always demanding our attention. And it provides some wonderful products which are very convenient and you know, entertaining but sometimes you know it kind of we lose a sense of grounding so it's okay watching lots of fantasy stuff or you know kind of detective dramas and stuff but how does that relate to the neighborhood that we live in and that we actually the people that we you know move amongst and that we share our world with um, so community media community reports and has a a real potential to f feel that we're grounded and that we maintain a sense of being grounded in our in our real world <laughs> so and it, I, I th kind of think it's like this idea of social value there's a social value to this uh, uh, form of media because you know there's some principles that um, I think define what makes it community media as opposed to maybe social media is that we treat people with respect and we recognise that people are experts in their own lives and their own experiences. We're not out to try and uh, um, undermine people or to to disrespect people. You know, we're not going to let people just go unchallenged with conspiracy theories. And this is why experience is really important. So, uh, you know, you've got to ground it in what people's experience was. If if somebody's got an opinion about, say, for example, the health service, and it's a lot of hot air and opinion. And then you ask people, well, what was your recent experience? And it's often at variance with what people read in other parts of the media. So we grind, ground it in our experience, and that's a really rich place to start because, you know, getting people involved, sharing and uh, deliberating and discussing controversial issues. It's not that we, don't, we, we, we shy away from controversy, but that what we want to do is we want to be uh, part of a, an informed and accountable discussion. Uh, and in this sense, it's better to show than it is to tell. So uh, I probably need to take this advice myself because I'm telling you a lot of information and I'm not showing you, uh, but I'll put some uh, links. Uh, and if you want to go to leicesterstories.uk, if you want to go to Leicester Community Radio, uh, .fm, I think it is, um, then there's examples uh, on their websites of community reporting, community media in action. And I think it's, you know, it's kind of, it opens up the voices. It opens up the range of people who um, might not otherwise get to be heard. So people who would never want to go and work at the BBC or would never, don't even know where their local commercial radio station is. It's often in a, an industrial estate at the back end of a, uh, you know, somewhere on the edge of the town, hidden behind five security keypadded doors. And, you know, you've got no chance of going in saying, hey, can I do a show with community radio that's the ethos that's the idea that you can get involved that you can write an article 
uh, for, for the local community newspaper. Uh, you can present a programme on the local community radio station. That's the fundamental principle of this. So other voices in a trusted and accountable way uh, can get access to, to being heard. And I think it's um, that element of tr trust and the principles of accountability um, or, or, or you know of respect and using evidence and being transparent about where your sources are uh, is really important you know and not just listening to um, what somebody tells you on whatsapp or something like that you've got to verify it you know so there's a there is still a process there of checking and double checking what the sources are uh, but it's not social media community reporting isn't this kind of idea of um, using a personal social media is personalized media we we often make the mistake of thinking that what we see in our uh, news feed uh, whether that's on twitter or facebook or wherever is somehow what everybody else is seeing no it's been designed specifically to reflect and tie in with our tastes that we we show across other platforms and you know the, the tracking that is is kind of taken place between what you buy and what you express a political view about and what you you know it, it, it's been connected facebook got into a lot of uh, uh trouble and they they, they apple of uh, and google are now starting to enhance the privacy of uh tracking so that you can't be tracked across platforms and you know it's like the, there's there's an exploitation there that is we we're not well we don't have the resources to counteract uh, but community media isn't about you know that kind of sense of personalized media and it's also not about the kind of level of antagonism that you get on community media a friend once told me that the best way to get clicks on his videos that he does on youtube was to get them materially wrong factually wrong uh, and he did that deliberately because it used to get a lot of clicks and a lot of people would react and respond and he knew exactly what he was doing but it was uh, it was de designed in order to facilitate clickbait um, and that's not what we engage with with community media you know we want to be a kind of trusted and viable source uh, but you know there's lots of advantages I use social media all the time you know it's a global platform but again, in the rush to things being global, are we forgetting what the local is about? Uh, and it is, you know, it's good to connect with people on a global basis, but at the same time, you know, we can be walking past people, we can sit in with people and we never interact um, because we don't have a shared culture and a shared sense of community because we're thinking, you know, something we follow an instagram influencers who are travel around the world or you know jet setters who are flying i mean i spend more time on youtube watching people walking around thailand and japan than i do watching people walking around leicester um and maybe need to get back to doing that you know that's a for these walking tour videos i'm a big fan of them um so <clears throat> the other thing you know kind of we're, we're prey you know there's a kind of sophisticated level of manipulation associated with social media and this is used to drive the profits of the large you know social media platforms and corporations like Google and Facebook and Apple and people like that so I think it's worth just kind of finishing off with what we what were the you know, what do we gain from the approach to community media that I'm outlining and, and I think the first one I'd say is that you get the share you get the skills and the knowledge as an individual you develop the ability to tell stories uh, and share those stories in a way that is relevant to the people that you uh, connect with or want to connect with or live with or are part of part of a community with it's not easy to do that so there's a certain level but I would say you know kind of start with what the simplest way to deal with it is capture what you can tell a story in the most simple basic way it might be a photograph and a caption that's a great starting point to a story. Uh, it can be developed and other people can develop it, but making a contribution in the easiest way possible. Um, you know, a diary entry or something, you know, it doesn't have to be a sophisticated piece of video work that looks like it could easily be on you know, News at 10. You know, it's, it's, there's a lot of people with a lot of really high-end skills on YouTube, for example, who um, are... Um, are really kind of you know I'm in awe of them but I, I can't do those I can't even use the gimbal um, you know why have I got a gimbal when I can't use it you know but the, so so don't think that you have to be professional and 
part of the community media ethos is that we deprofessionalize things and we we make it accessible for for everybody to maybe share and contribute what they think is relevant um so then um you know we can we don't have to stick to one format we can like this we can we can record something and speak it and if we're working collaboratively with other people and they they might turn it into a written article or you know we can capture things in different ways there's a huge range of different ways that it covers every platform you know every possible way that we can think about using our media to um to to, to tell a story that's you know we're, we're not we shouldn't close ourselves off to just working in one media you know it's it's you know Get, getting out and about is really important as well uh, you know not just being stuck in a studio um, and not just waiting for people to send you know us send you stories but to being out and about and talking to people directly again that's not one of my strengths and <laughs> you know that's something that I, I wish I could improve but I'm not good other people are, are getting out and about just talking to people that's uh, something I'd like to develop but it's, it's not happened yet so it, there's a phrase which is used uh, which is about called social oops, called social capital um, and it's this idea that uh, we uh, kind of enrich our sense of well-being and our sense of community by sharing those intangible things in the same way that money really helps and finances really help if we are uh, to um, to be a well-organized pleasant place to live uh, there also needs to be a sense of shared understanding and a sense of you know there's a, a social capital or a cultural capital that goes with that um, but I think you know this this kind of notionship of of belonging and companionship and and, and co-identification um, that we get from just kind of being together and rubbing up against one another um it can be hard you know and in cities it's really tough as well you know it's um but there's there's you know i don't want to be romantic about it and think that you know we should all go back to some kind of village life um but you know kind of a little bit more mutual understanding and listening to one another and understanding each other's stories and perspectives of where we've come from and what we are expert in in terms of our lived experience would be very useful um and so for me, I think, you know, the, 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 the personal sense of pride that you get is really valuable. You know, forget about everybody else. If you're happy with the story that you're creating and sharing, that's all that matters, really. You know, everything else can follow and we don't need to be so worried about what the, the audience out there thinks. But if you're happy with what you're doing and then you start to build it up then from you know you, your friends your family your neighbors then that that kind of grows you don't have to be uh, out there thinking about i think the, the, the worst things whenever i taught media studies the worst thing that people ever used to ask was uh, uh, who's your audience you know it's kind of forget about that you know what do you think that's a good starting point and are you happy with it is a good starting point um and i think you know kind of overall what you get from that is a sense that our experience actually matters is that the things that we do the, 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 the ideas that we have the places that we go to the people that we interact with the shops that we use the bus services that we use our experience of that you know really shouldn't go without acknowledgement you know our our culture our um, sense of what our faith our musical uh, interests you know our theater poetry drama films whatever it is you know it kind of it does make each of us unique if that's what we are into sport you know um you know there's there's many many things that i'm not interested in and and wouldn't really care about but there's also many things that other people aren't interested in what i'm interested in but you know there'll be a small number of people maybe who are share similar interests and have a similar kind of sense of, of why those things matter and just being acknowledged in the crowd that your experience matters and your personal t views on things matter at some point is is really important anyway um i think i spoke a bit longer than i intended to uh, and kind of lots of people walking past in the park. I'm just wondering whether the squirrels seem to have gone now. They were having a mad half hour a few minutes ago, so they were up and down the trees. Uh, and I really probably should have just sat here and 
recorded them. That, uh, that, that, there we go. Squirrels go crazy in the park. We have pictures. But you know, that's community reporting for you. So uh, if you want to get in contact with me, uh, the website is okay. The website is decentered.co.uk. Uh, you can contact me on Twitter and Instagram at Decentered Media. But until next time, I'll speak to you soon. Thanks. You've been watching a Decentered Media vlog with me, Rob Watson. To find out more, go to decentered.co.uk or follow on Twitter and Instagram at Decentered Media.